Cisco Identity Services Engine, integration with Endpoint AMP, and adaptive network control. So let's go ahead in ICE and we'll go to Administration Deployment and we'll enable Threat-Centric NAC. Now I've already done this, but I'm just gonna walk you through it. So go to your nodes that you want to enable it on and go ahead and click that check mark. Once that is completed, we gotta wait a few minutes to wait for the application to actually get started. You can do a show application status ICE and you can see the Threat-Centric elements um, already running. Once that's running, we're, we're ready to go and we can complete our configuration on Identity Services Engine. So let's go ahead to Threat-Centric NAC. We're gonna add a AMP threat, which is AMP for endpoints, and we're gonna go ahead and give the instance a name, and then we'll save that out, and eventually we should see ready to configure, and there we go, and now we'll go ahead and click that to complete the configuration. No proxy, so we'll go ahead and click Next. Cloud, we'll select the US Cloud in my case. We'll select Next. And here's the link that's gonna take us into Endpoint AMP to allow us to finalize the configuration and allow the application. So we'll go ahead and log in here. We'll enter our verification code. And click Login. And here, all you need to do is allow. Now, I played with the groups moving them in and out, but what I found was the default when the, you get put here and hit allow allows the all the events um, to stream. And to see the events, once you hit allow, you'll you'll go back into Identity Services Engine, and there's going to be a um, advanced setting right here that you can click to see all the events that will actually be shared with um, Identity Services Engine. This will turn into connected and active, and it has. So now we're good, we're up and running. Um, we can actually now start testing. But before that, I, like I try to do in most videos is everything from scratch. So we're gonna download the connector. I'm gonna select the audit group just so um, I'm not blocking any of the threats. I wanna see the threats actually happen and indication of, of, of sorts have to take place. And remember, this is not PX grid integration. This is actually um, sticks taxi integration. So this is going to give us an event that might be painful as an example. So go ahead and do the installation on the endpoint. You can see this, you know, again, only takes a minute or so. And once this is done, what we're going to do is we're going to do a quick flash scan. Um, first, we'll make sure the policy is connected. The, the connector looks good. And then we'll go ahead and do that flash scan. And we're only doing that because I want to make sure that when we see the events, there's the, the green check mark. When we see the events in Endpoint AMP, we know that everything is working and then we can start our testing. So let's go ahead and do that flash scan and it takes roughly 50 seconds to run complete. And let's pivot over to the command prompt just to check the host name and we can see it's desk, desktop dash E zero, etc. So we'll do a quick search here for desktop and apply the filters. And there we go, that top host there, it's part of the audit group, which is what we want. And go ahead and click the events and we should see scan clean and we do. Okay, so endpoint's good. We're not connected to VPN currently. And I just want to show you the difference here and we're going to extract netcat. Go ahead and extract that file. So we've downloaded it and you can see the folders got net, netcat in it. And so if I look and you can see I've done some other tests, but if we come in here and refresh, we'll look at the timestamp here and you can see it's 957. The asset says 957. So it definitely detected. The X just means it's auditing at that point. It, if it was blocked, it would have showed like quarantine. It would have showed a, a little lock key. Again, we do the same with EI car. We'll do scan history, and then we'll go back to file events just to refresh that. And we can see again that um, it did detect it. Okay, so now if everything's working, we should be able to go into endpoint amp and see, there we go. We can see painful. And we can see the host, HR1, it's disconnected currently. 
but we know that the event took place. So that's pretty cool, right? So there's no integration necessarily with 802.1x or VPN. I still see the event in in um, Identity Services Engine. When we pivot to the host, we can also see the timestamp here, confidence levels high, and it was reported by AMP. Okay, so that's neat. Let's um, let's play around here a little bit. Um, let's let's think about. Um, let's go back to the endpoint, and let's VPN in, and let's change the user just so we can see change here. And this is the same endpoint. I'm just changing the the user that's logging into VPN in this case, and we'll accept that. And um, yeah, let's go ahead and we'll execute or extract netcat again. Get a new timestamp. And the painful event is going to be the same, right? We're going to still get the, the exact same uh, trigger, right? So that's not going to, it's not going to clear the trigger. It's still going to exist. And you can see here, the once we do a quick bounce between them, you can see the timestamp is new. And you even got the EI car, you know, bracket one.com. But what we are now able to do, so go into compromised host, and just and since we have change of authorization enabled on this host, we can see there it's connected now. So we know it's connected. We can see the sales one user, but now we can do a change of authorization. So this is a manual effort here where I can terminate the session. So we'll go ahead and click that, and then we'll quickly bounce back to the endpoint and you can see here it's already disconnecting in progress or disconnect in progress and the gateway terminated the session. So pretty neat. We were able to manually do that. So why don't we go ahead and look at doing adaptive net network control. So first thing we need to do is go to operations, adaptive network control, go to policy list and we're going to go ahead and add a policy here. And this policy, give it a name. I'm going to call it ANC-VPN-AMP-Quarantine. And you can see we've got a couple of actions available to us right from here. I'm going to select Quarantine in this case and go ahead and hit Submit. And let's go back to Endpoints here and Compromised Endpoint. And we can see our sales one user, but let's just do a test from scratch. We'll reconnect here, but we'll do IT1 or HR1. And let's go ahead and log in. Hit accept. And let's bring back Identity Services Engine. Oh, first let's run the actual um, extraction of Netcat and um, EICAR. We can see that there. Yes, Netcat's enough. We'll go ahead and refresh. We can see the user HR1. We can also see that it's connected. We see a painful uh, threat severity. Go ahead and click uh, ANC. Now we can assign a policy. Go ahead and assign that policy. When we do that, we can see success here and terminated the tunnel. Pretty neat. So Maybe the next thing we can do here is let's um, go ahead and refresh. We can see it's disconnected now. And you've got the ability to clear threats and vulnerabilities as well. But let's go ahead to operations endpoint assignment. And we can see there's our endpoint. There's the policy and it's quarantined. Um, we can go ahead and click edit here. We can go back to list. We have EPS unquarantine as well over on the far right. Um, and in my case, I'm just going to trash um, this, this host from this list. But anyways, you can see roughly, you know, 10, 10 minutes. We've got, um, you know, Cisco integrated, Cisco ICE integrated with Endpoint AMP and we're doing adaptive network control. Here we can see lots of events in Endpoint AMP, pretty neat stuff, and it doesn't take too long to get that set up.